All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Korash. Double honors to the apostles, Elsberry Millstone, and Satish Brothers doing this thing in sincerity and truth and with charity. And, um, well, firstly, you know, that I said in the uh, beginning of this little all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh is named Heavenly Father. Bahasham is in the name, Ba'in Hadasham name. Yahweh Shai is the only begotten son. And Racha Kwadash with Holy Spirit. Excuse me. Literally translated Spirit Holy. Racha Spirit Kwadash Holy. Alright. Now I'm gonna hop right into it, you know. Um the blue letter is not the proof. Alright. The Bible is the proof. The Bible is the doctrine. The Bible is what our faith must lie in. You know, we believe on Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai. Um, not saying throw, of course, definitely not saying throw the blue letter away. Come on now. Not saying that. What I'm saying is the Bible is the proof. And to even understand what's true and wrong in the blue letter or any thing we're looking at, it must align with the scriptures. Whatever doesn't align is false or simply just misunderstood. You know, you can't just, you know, be not confident in a plain way. All right. And we've seen men come in the truth, teach the right doctrine and end up not... End up leaving the truth because of a definition. Oh, no, I mean, this is plain. This is what it means. The whole time, the definition is off. Or they don't understand what's being said. In short, the blue letter can go off, man. It's that simple. All right? Psalms, 109, Psalms 119, 104. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. So the scriptures is, is how we have understanding. It's not the blue letter. It's the scriptures. We have to ha use the spirit to discern what's wrong and what's right and what's wrong in the blue letter. That's part of being a priest, separating the clean from unclean. And just for the record, you know, this uh, Sirach 515, be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small. So again, this isn't saying don't use the blue letter or something like that. It's saying we must, it's the scriptures first. It's like, uh, let's use Paul for an example. You know, he's in the spirits, bringing out truth, you know, scriptures. And in the middle of it, he said, even your own poets say it. The poets ain't like, oh, well, you know, the poet says so much. It's like even they know. Even this is it. Even, even this definition tells you what the scriptures is telling you. All right. To the law and to the testimony. And they speak out according to this word is because there's no light in them. So the scriptures is the proof. Okay. Um three. Second Timothy three and fifth and <laughs> I started fourteen. The point is really sixteen, seventeen. Um, Second Timothy three and fourteen. But continue, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise to salvation through faith. Which is in Mashiach Yahweh Shai. So the scriptures gives you the wisdom. The scriptures is what makes us wise so we can receive salvation. The scriptures is what gives us understanding as we just read. All right. Cage. Cage. Dang, I'm not going to ruin this lesson. <laughs> 
All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, teachings, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of the Most High may be perfect, complete, mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So this, these scriptures will furnish us so we can have good works. The scriptures is what gives us wisdom. The scriptures is what gives us true doctrine, teachings. All right? The scriptures is the proof. Now, I say, and, and uh, I have an example in a blue letter that I do want to touch. And um, it's edifying, you know, and it's perfect for the for what we're dealing with right now, you know, which is vocab. Pushing this same narrative of he that's going to be saved and this, which, come on, man. The, who who going to be the slaves that the scriptures continuously speak about? That all the heathens are going to go into captivity. Look, it just is what it is, man. <laughs> all right. Israel will be on top. But um, it's. Well, let's just get to it. So this is um, Acts 11. We're going to start at 20. I'm starting 19. Acts 11, 19. Now they, which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phineas and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. To Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, Speak unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Yahweh Shai. And the, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number of believers returned unto the Lord. Face value, people will take this. Oh, man. So, they went and taught heathens, but it just said Jews only. So, these Grecians are followers and believers of their heritage. All right? Followers of the ways of Judah. As the scriptures say, it's not a Jew outwardly, but inwardly. And it's talking about what? The mindset. So this is talking about Israelites that followed the ways of Judah. That happened to be in Greece. They didn't leave their customs. All right. And then the blue letter is going to say the same thing. Essentially. And the word is Hellenistes, a Hellenist, one who imitates the manners and customs or the worships of the Greeks and use the Greek language. Then it says Jews in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. All right. Jews in the New Testament of Jews born in the foreign lands and speaking Greek. Grecian. This definition is more accurate. Okay, because there's another word for Hellenin, I mean, for, for this definition here that they give. Well, who imitates the manners, the customs, and worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. So this, this is really more so about using the Greek language. You, or at least you know who you are you still keep your ways. All right, but you'll have the Greek language as it plainly puts right here. Now, there's another definition for those. You know what? I'll do it this way. I don't mean to do that. Basically, simply put that a Greek speaking Jew, right? And this is where it comes from, the word Hellenin. And it says a Greek either by nationality, whether a native of the mainland or of the Greek islands or colonies. So meaning, <laughs> see this way gets confusion because you have to put it in. Proper perspective. When you ask by national, you ask a, you can ask a, Ch a Chinese motherfucker. That's in America. What's the nationality? You can ask two of them. One to tell you Chinese American. 
Okay? He acknowledges his heritage. He knows who he is. That would be Hellenistes. You ask another one, where you from? I'm American. And they completely cast off. You know, that's a big thing, too, with the, with these other nations. The, the, the second, third, fourth generation so-called Asians, they're, they completely don't give a shit about where they come from. They know I'm, I'm from Nevada. <laughs> I'm American. That's Hellenin. So by, both by nation are Greeks or American. But one knows his heritage, acknowledges it. Hellenist days. One doesn't acknowledge it. Probably don't know it. That's Hellenin. But then for Hellenin, it also says this. In a wider sense, which is the, what I just said, right? In a wider sense, the name embraces all nations. So anybody who comes to Greece, okay, that, uh, let me just read this. I want to skip this phrase first. In a wider sense, the name embraces all nations that made the language Customs and learning of the Greeks, their own. The primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. So that's what Helen is. It doesn't matter what nation you are. You took on the Greek ways. You're, you're a Grecian. You're full-blown Americanized. You're, all, you're American. Now the blue letter says, not the Jews. They tried to exclude the Jews from this definition, which is false. And I'm going to show you even Esau knows this. This is Google. <laughs> Hellenist versus Hellenistes. The term Hellenist refers to the people of Greece. Hellenist. While Hellenist refers to someone who adopted Greek culture Language or outlook. Okay. Hellenist. The term Hellenist comes from the Greek word Hellas, which means Greece. The Hellenists were not necessarily ethnic Greeks, so they weren't necessarily the seed of Japhet. But included people from groups like the Syrians, Egyptians, Jews, Arabs, and Armenians. So they said the Jews could definitely indeed be counted as Hellenic. Because, yes, there were many Jews that left the, their, our customs and took on the ways of the Greeks. They were not acknowledged they are Israelites anymore. They became full-on Greeks. Hellenistes. A Hellenist is a person who adopted Greek culture, language, or outlook, but was not Greek in ancestry. In the Bible, Hellenists were Jews who spoke Greek and embraced Greek culture. They were more open-minded than other Jews and were likely among the first to convert to Christianity. So Hellenists are Israelites who knew who we were. It had the Greek language. Okay. They had maybe they had a Greek haircut, had a Greek style of dress, but they knew who they were. They acknowledged that they are the Israelites. Okay? They believed in their heritage. All right. But this goes to show that you need the spirit to understand the blue letter. Because right here it says in a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews. Now, this could be put here to deceive. Or it could just be. The, uh, be not confident in a plain way, because remember. To be a Jew isn't just to be born Judah. You have to follow 
those customs. So it can be saying a wider system that embraces all nations. It, it, I mean, not the Jews that made the not the Jews that made their language customs and learning of the Greeks their own. So it could have been put to say not those that knew they were Jews. It doesn't make sense. This is just going off. It's just going off. And here's the proof. Now we read that definition. That definition, you know, that's fine. That's great because it's true. But we know it's true because of this in the scriptures. Now this is John. Seven thirty-five. Then said the Jews among themselves, "Whither will he go? That we should not find him. Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles?" So they called the dispersed Israelites Gentiles. Oh, right, plainly, will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles to teach the Gentiles? So they called the dispersed Gentiles. But we can, um, quick Bible comparison, you know, but really I want to test the definition for that word. The Gentiles right there. Yeah, the, C the CSB. Then the Jews said to one another. Where does he intend to go that we won't find him? He doesn't intend to go to the Jewish people dispersed among the Greeks and teach the Greeks, does he? All right. So it called them Greeks right there. Don't say Gentiles, say Greeks. Well, why is that? Because right here, the word there is Helen. And it's the definition that goes off. But the Bible made it clear. These are talking about Jews that's among the people. But they weren't counting as Jews. They weren't keeping the customs. They forsook their ways. And that's why I was, you know, saying maybe it was worded like this in this definition because it's talking about men that's no longer counting as Jews. So not the Jews, no. Not the Jews that kept the ways, but any other, any people, you know, but no, this just, this just doesn't make sense. No, because this includes Israelites. Although they saying they Jews and forsook their ways, they're still technically Israelites. Okay. So it's just simply off. All right. So let's get, the, let's get an account of this, man. First Maccabees 1. Eleven. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. <coughs> Slaki. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Then served the people were so forward therein herein, that they went to the king who gave them license to go after the ordinance of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise in Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant. They stopped calling themselves Jews and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to the mischief. They became Hellenin. Now when the kingdom was, but they're still Israelites by blood, but these are the Hellenin. They, especially their children, they, they weren't finna teach their children their customs. They, they already passed that. Now, when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, no, no, that, that's the, hold on, no, that's the point. Now, let's jump down. It's, it's another one. Uh, 
um, 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and, every, and everyone should leave his laws so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So there were a lot of Jake's Israelites who became Hellenin. Forsook our ways, way to say, everyone should leave his laws. Be one people. That's what it means to, to, to Hellenize something. Today you would call it Americanized. That's why I gave the example about the two Chinamen, okay? But this is what they did. They Hellenized things, man. They made, they Greekified it, so to say. And you had a lot of Israelites that were down with saying, skip being a Jew. I'm just a Greek. Okay. And of course, your Israelites still kept the customs. And then in the midst of that, you had some that kept, you know, still was Israelites, but dwelt among these Greeks and learned the language and the certain of the customs, you know, maybe even if it was just a dress style and all that happened. All right, but nevertheless, they were Hellenistas. Now let's um, it's another one. Is it the first Mac or second Mac? I believe it was 2nd Maccabees. <laughs> yeah, this is... um. Second Maccabees four and seven. But after the death of Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Onias, labored under him to be high priest, promised unto the king by intercession three hundred and three score talents of silver, and of another revenue eighty talents. Besides beside this, he promised to assign a hundred and fifty more, if he might have lights to set him up a place for exercise. And for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. So you got a Jake that want to be a priest, an Israel, Israelite priest, but is going to sell his people out to grow up to be greek man. And to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. All right. And you had a lot that ate that doctrine completely up and just. No longer considered themselves Israelite. They didn't give a shit about the customs. They were straight Greek. They had some that got brought in there, but still followed some of our ways. They acknowledged who we are. Okay? And then that brings us to back to Acts 11. Because that's Antioch, right? There's Vince Antiochians. And then we have end up having Antioch, right? So now let's jump down to Acts 11. Mm. And 26. Here we get to the point. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. Remember, up top it said they were teaching the Jews in these places. And then they called them Hellenistes. So they was they were Greek by nation, and they were living there, born there, but they knew they were Jews, Israelites. And it says 26, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year, yeah, that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church 
and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And then what did this say? They were more open minded than other Jews and were likely among the first to convert to Christianity. And it is not the religion of Christianity you see today, but the first believers of Yahweh Shai. All right. So they but it lets you know that they were what Israelites in foreign lands. OK. And that's really plain, man. That's really the point. <laughs> so these are Israelites being saved. These Grecians are Israelites. These Greeks are Israelites. The Gentiles is hearing this truth. Israelites, scattered Israelites, man. James 1 and 1 is so plain. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. This is who this... Word is to the scattered Israelites. Okay? St. John 7.35, we read it already, man. You can't get around it. Tobit 13. Plain. This is milk. One. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be the Most High that lives forever, and blessed be his kingdom. Read off scourge and have mercy. He leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel. For he has scattered us among them. It's about going to the dispersed amongst the Gentiles and teaching those dispersed Gentiles. Okay? So the hope is edifying all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles. That was a great millstone. And shout out to your brothers, don't think in sincerity, in truth, and with charity. Shalom, Baba Baal.